Hello and welcome to Handmade Chelsea Online for another Exhibitor Live session. Um, I'm Alice and I'm part of the Handmade in Britain team and we're joined by the lovely um, Emily. So this is going to be an insight into the metalsmith behind the scenes with Emily Smith. Now Emily is based um, up now in Winchester which is an exciting, exciting town um, to be in. And this live session is going to look at her new surroundings and give a little bit more insight into her subtle design features of her new collection, which she's featuring on Handmade Chelsea Online. Now, this is going to be an interactive session. So please, if you do have any questions for Emily during the talk, please do open our chat function um, and do ask a question and then I'll interject and ask you know throughout the talk so um we're ready so welcome everyone and emily it's over to you hello everybody um i'm emily uh, the mind and madness behind the metal smith um as alice said i am based in winchester i'm very very lucky to have this space it is new this year i'm new to the space this year rather than the space um it's a place called the Colour Factory, Winchester, and it's been here uh, quite a while now. The Colour Factory itself has been here 26 years, but the building beforehand was the old park keeper's lodge. We've got a nice little park just outside of the, outside of the building over there. And my little workshop um, is a little bit separate from the rest of the building. It actually used to be the ladies' loos, and I'm going to try and rotate here. I'm not sure if you see this little chunk of wall in the middle of my desk space here, but that used to be the partition. So it got gutted and um, the toilets and various things blocked up and taken away and is now a very nice little workshop. I have pretty much everything I need in here. You're currently sat on my soldering station where I use my blowtorch and do all kinds of little fiddly things. Um, to your right, we have my jewellery bench where all the hand tools come into play. The files, the papering, piercing things out. Um, behind me is my very own little polishing station. I've got a very cute little polishing motor here and rigged up a little bit of extraction because it does tend to be a very messy process and little bits of stuff just fly everywhere. You should see me after a day of it. I am absolutely caked, brown, pink, smeared all over my face. Lots of bits of stuff in my hair. Um, I have a nice little pillar drill just down here. It's very handy, very good for drilling lots of little things back to back. I have a very nice little vise on the end of my also very handy, very solid, very good wooden bench built specially for me. Um, a little ultrasonic here, this little digital box is ever so good for cleaning. Um, you stick whatever you want cleaned, whatever you want um, nice and clean in the little box. You press the go button and it sends lots of little ultrasonic waves and basically shakes the piece of metal clean. Um, I would demonstrate, but it makes a horrible noise and I really don't want to scare anybody off. Um, in the corner, we have my little mess station slow cooker not cooking any casserole unfortunately it is for pickle um, which is used for cleaning the metal after it's been soldered soldering station um, and it's very handy in a slow cooker because it keeps it nice and warm which speeds up the reaction which just makes the whole thing go a lot quicker um, a big mess around the corner, so I'm not going to show you that. That's a lot of stuff ready to go in the bin. Um, yeah, what else can I tell you about the space? Um, the, the bigger space, the colour factory, unfortunately, is a, bit, a little bit inconvenient to wander around with a laptop. Um, 
but we have a nice bigger building where our painters reside and we have another separate little building where we teach classes um, and I shall be joining that fun later on um, early next year hopefully fingers crossed so it sounds like actually it's a really unique kind of work environment you know first of all yeah. especially as you mentioned you're working in the ladies loos you're the first designer i think i've met who's openly said they're working in a ladies loo so <laughs> what, a, what a fascinating you know room and studio you know and, and building and collective um, it seems that you that you work in. Now we, we want to talk about kind of some of those subtle elements of your design and I've been looking you know more at your collection I'm sure our attendees have as well and you kind of run on themes of you know positivity and humanity with some of your pieces you know being called you know say something some of your pieces you know the importance of others tell us a little bit about you know this, the thinking and and why has that inspired your collections? Um, I think given current situations particularly, this, this project was born before the various disasters of this year happened, um, but I just had the kind of growing realisation of being surrounded by negativity. There was an awful lot of negativity on social media, there's an awful lot of negativity in the news, and it just seems that we're kind of being inundated and it's not fun to be bogged down it's not fun to be feeling miserable all the time um i'm not a crazy um positive person with my head up in the clouds i am aware that we there is no kind of eradicating every single negative that have every single negative thing that happens in the world but I just think it would be nice to interject some more positive things where possible. It might take a bit more effort, but I think it's really worth it. So all of my little pieces in their own way are created to bring a little smile to someone's face, to bring a little hope, to encourage them to do something good for someone else, to make them feel good, to be reminded of something lovely that someone's done for them, um, to feel a part of something to to be encouraged to take a stand there was there was a lot of things i was trying to do and i i feel quite good about how much i managed to accomplish within such a uh, a small amount of pieces but these pieces are being expanded on the collection is being expanded on as we speak so, so let's so can we have a look at some of these pieces because I can I can hear you kind of talking about it. Can we have a look at some of these? It'd be great to see. Well, the first little one is a brooch, I'll show you. Um, and it's one of my favourites. I called it light in the dark. We've got a nice little ebony background and a little brass uh, brass person standing out there, nice and shiny. Um, I think the, the name kind of says it all, um, representing light in the darkness. There's, there's always something positive there. And these brooches were, the ebony brooches were all designed with a double pin. So that not only do they function as a little decorative piece for you but if you're not wearing it as you you're not always wearing all your jewelry constantly they do it's not going to work too well standing up on my hand but they stand up by themselves so you've got a little piece of jewelry a little decorative piece for you and a decorative piece for your home all in one and it's again it's not easily demonstrable on my um let's find something you mentioned they're brass people, so are you actually creating them out of brass? And how easy, if if so, how easy is brass to work with? Brass itself isn't too bad. The way that I do things, I tend to make myself um, give myself a bit of a trickier job than necessary a lot of the time. So these little brass characters, um, again, playing on the themes of um, taking negative things, turning them into something positive they're cast from melted down brass shell casings and the i don't know if it's something in the alloy but it does not like being cast so we've had a lot of failures 
but luckily there have been a lot of salvageable ones that I've been able to make into all of these little pieces. But the metal itself is, is not too difficult to work with and it's a much more purse friendly option to gold, um, which is, 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 is quite good for me. Um, I quite like it, a really nice warm color. Um, I find that silver, I do use a lot of silver. It works brilliantly for a lot of things, but I do find that it can almost be quite cold. And that wasn't really the thing that I was going for with this collection with these pieces. Um, so are some of your pieces, are you using kind of found material? So is the wood recycled? Is, is that a part of your collection, kind of sustainability along with your positivity themes? Yeah, a little bit. I, I try and do that, kind of keep that, um, that theme, that idea going just through my brand, through what I make just all over, because I think it's a really important thing to keep in mind a really important thing to have um, because so much so much stuff gets wasted and it's a real shame so the little bits of ebony so you also use the ebony to make some little stands for the rounded bottom rings um, the ebony was off cuts from a woodworker um, actually passed through two people. A jeweler who I used to share with kindly gave me a chunk, um, which probably was absolutely useless to the original owner, to the woodworker, because it was just so tiny for anything useful like furniture. But it's managed to create about five or six pieces for me, plus four little ring stands as well. So um, yeah, that worked out quite well for me. Um, yeah, the, the silver, everything, I don't think I've had to buy anything new. Everything's come from, uh, except for the, um, the, the pins, everything's come from recycling old test pieces from uni. I only recently graduated last year. Um, the, the brass was from the cartridges, which were very kindly given to me as well. Um, the ebony was again off cuts it wasn't any use to someone else but it was really really good for me um yeah that's fantastic so let's have a look at some some more of the pieces that you have um i have very very brand new and exclusive to um virtual chelsea i have a series of three little brooches uh pin brooches um all based around the theme um of the Emily Dickinson poem hope is the thing with wings that perches within the soul and so all of these little characters all of these little brass characters all have wings that some form in another move so this guy's got little flappy arms with little calico wings um, this guy has little sheet wings that I've cut out from brass and they've been riveted to the back and they move too. And then number three is a much more delicate option. Got to be careful not to get this caught in hair or jumpers or scarves. Um, but each of the feathers uh, move independently and it's very satisfying to watch and very satisfying to play with. So those are three new exclusive to Handmade in Chelsea pieces. They've not been seen before, only recently out of my workshop as of last week, and then as of today, back in the workshop. Um, we also have uh, two, I've got a couple of different choices of earrings, um, all made from scraps after um, finishing off the, the more intricate pieces, um, each using a piece of the brass, so I've got some nice little hoops here and I've got, oh, is it tricky? I've got some little studs, a little silver pebble with a little brass fan which I popped out the back of that cartridge um, and all of the earrings, yes they're made of brass but I've made sure to solder 
silver onto any point that would come into contact with your skin so that a lot of people find that they don't react well to base metals and things like um, things like brass because of the copper content it reacts with the acid in your skin and it turns you blue or green um, but a lot more people are comfortable with silver silvers um, I don't I wouldn't call it hypoallergenic but much more so than um, brass um, I believe so I made sure that and the same with any piece of the jewellery in the collection actually any part of the piece that would come into contact with your skin has silver soldered as a barrier so that you shouldn't react and it just yeah it makes it a little bit more accessible for more people i can see a lot of the collection you spoke about is very much pin based what we were looking at before some of those were, were pins what it is what is it about pins and brooches is it that idea which you discussed and, and showed us earlier where it can be both a sculptural piece that can sit on its own and it can be a wearable piece what is it about you know brooches that that, that kind of evoke you know wanting to produce more i think the the fact that they can stand on their own is a, is a bonus but i think they work so well as isolated pieces. You can put whatever you, you can do, whatever you like to them. You can, you can create whatever little object that you want. And as long as you weight it well, it, it just, it works. You don't have to worry about how to connect it to a chain or how will it sit against just your, your other fingers. You don't have to worry about the weight of it on your ears and don't have to worry about a matching pair. It's, it's almost like, a little sculpture that you can wear and I I have heard a couple times that the brooches aren't in anymore and I, I heartily disagree I really like them I think it's it's something that can really make a statement and it can really speak for you um, back in uni I did a little bit of research into potential meanings of brooches and came across um, analysis of dreams and to have a brooch featured in your dream is wanting to say something it's saying that there is a message that you're trying to get across which i really liked whether it's true or not that is beside the point i liked it and it sits well with me it it it, it speaks to me and i completely agree i think it is a really good way of trying to get a message across i i, I really like that i think it's really nice to kind of hear you know, here that you you kind of researched it and it kind of meant something and you fed that into your work. Now you've mentioned, you know, kind of, you know, graduating last last year, but I've actually seen it's allowed you to travel not only to, to new designers, but to Munich Jewelry Week. So you've actually got a lot of, you know, experience, you know, in just a very short time. I mean, what was the experiences like and what's been the reaction to, you know, to your jewelry collections so far? Well, I... This is a new collection as of this year, but um, as you can probably imagine, I don't really make the simplest of things. The previous collection was quite niche, quite an unusual as well. So it's really, I really enjoy seeing people face to face and seeing people take in my pieces. Some people you can tell it's really not for them. You can tell by their faces. I know they try and hide it not to offend me and it's completely okay. I know these aren't gonna be for everybody, but the ones that it does touch, you see their faces light up and you see the biggest smiles and it just brings me so much joy to see a reaction like that. Um, it's part of the reason why I've continued to do little moving elements of jewellery because I think that is something that really makes a lot of people smile and it's just, it is a really nice element to have. Um, you've got something to fiddle with um, and it's really fun. Um, in terms of the shows, um, I used to be a very, very shy person and coming into adulthood, I've taken it upon myself to try and make the most of every single opportunity I can. Uh, whether it makes me uncomfortable or not, I will go for it because I would much rather go for it and it go a little bit sideways than having missed out on the opportunity and having regrets and, and, and not having had an experience. So New Designers was really fun. Munich Jewelry Week, sadly, this collection was supposed to go to Munich Jewelry Week this year and parts of it did. 
um, but I, I didn't. Um, and um, it also allowed us to, um, to kind of reinvent because obviously um, COVID happened and that, that was a real, um, that was a real challenge. Um, exhibitions can go ahead as normal as we can tell because we're sat here doing this instead of talking face to face. Um, so it brought on a load of new challenges, um, having to create videos instead of talking to people about your work, being able to um, include all of the information, all the necessary information about the ideas, the context, material choices. Um, that was, it was a learning experience. That was good fun. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really do like interacting with people about my work, about anybody's work. Creativity is just so much fun. Um, and it was something that I hope to continue to do. Hopefully this life will return a little bit more to normal and by next year we'll have these events in person again. <laughs> I hope, I hope so, but certainly for me, you know, such a positive outlook and it, it's really lovely um, to, to see that, but also I can see that positivity, you know, in your work and, and long may it continue, Emily. So thank you so much, you know, for joining us um, this afternoon. It's been really lovely um, to get to know you better, the collection and, you know, where that work has, has taken you and where it's going to lead to. So, so thank you very much. And, and thank you to all our attendees um, as well. I hope you enjoyed your time with Emily. And I've actually popped her link um, to her shop and profile in the chat box. So please do click. And also you can find Emily on live chat. And to get onto live chat, you just go to our website, interact.handmadeinbritain.co.uk. And you'll see live chat and then pop into Emily's room. I know she'll be online, but don't worry if you miss her, you can leave a message. And next time she's online, she can get back to you. But once again, find her and find our other fellow exhibitors on Handmade Chelsea Online. So once again, Emily, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed your time with us and from the Handmade in Britain team and I, we hope you have you know, a great couple of days you know, with us here at the show. So all that's left for me to say is thank you and thank you once again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>